Good morning, church. It is good to be in the house of God with you all this morning. Hansel, could you turn my mic down just a smidge? (laughs) I feel like I'm talking to myself in the sky. (laughs) Good morning, everybody. This has been a difficult week um, for people who have been a part of our community for a long time. Um, And for those of you who are new here, um, we lost uh, one of our board members in a tragic death um, this past week. He was shot and killed in his home uh, in Sebring, Florida. He's been a part of this church for many years and has um, just been a fierce um, leader in so many ways. Um, And so if you see many of us here this morning that look a bit somber, that is um, what we're holding um, and what we hold together. Um, With that, we come to this space, trusting that God is here with us. Despite the many things we hold, despite the many things that consume our minds and our hearts, we come to this space to be met by our God, who created us, who calls us by name, and invites us into the divine presence. I welcome you to St. John's to this service of worship and pray that each one of you might find a healing balm for your soul today. Let us worship our God, and as we begin our worship, I would invite you into a moment of silence as we prepare our hearts to meet God in this space. Lord, come and be with us. Fill us up and give us strength. Amen. I would like to draw your attention to a couple of announcements. Um, You will find our bulletin looks a little different this morning. Um, And so it might take a little bit to get familiarized. There are some announcements on the inside right panel. Um, And so Please be take note, I won't read all of them, but we do have some small groups. We take monthly collections of donations to support the homeless ministry at First United Methodist Church downtown. So please pay attention to that if you would like to help. Uh, tomorrow night, I would like to invite each of you, everybody, to come to my house for a Christmas party. Uh, It'll be like an open house style, 6 to 9 p.m. I know some people have to work, and so I wanted to have it a little earlier, but I know it's a little hard to get uh, off work and to a party at that time. So uh, it'll be 6 to 9. There will be food. There will be um, some beverages. There will be lots of stuff for you all to enjoy, Um, and most importantly, a time to be together um, and to fellowship. So I hope all of you uh, might consider joining us. I do invite you to park here in the church parking lot. My house, by the way, is this house right next door, (laughs) Uh, for those of you who don't know. Um, And so if you can just park in this parking lot and walk around through the front gate, um, and that's how you can get in. We will also be having a Christmas Eve service here on December 24th. The music will begin at 4.30 p.m. There will be a concert style from 4.30 to 5. Um, Our music team and those from First Church will Uh, provide us some beautiful selections of music, and so I look forward to all of the gifts that you will bring us that evening. And then our normal service will begin at 5 p.m. This service um, will be more like a a service of lessons and carols. There will be um, some scriptures read throughout, and then there will be a time for us to have congregational carols in between the different scripture readings. Um, So I pray that each of you uh, might come and join us for that special service if you're in town and invite any friends that you have who are in town who are looking for a place to go on Christmas Eve. We will not have church on December 26th here in person. It will be virtually, so it will be live on Facebook or our website, um, and we will send out a link to that the morning of. Um, So please be aware of that. Just you can go to church in your PJs that morning. Uh, I hope you all will take take advantage of that if you would like. Um, We are also, I'm pleased to announce that um, Harold Marrero is our media director, and he has been putting a lot of work into updating our website. 
Um, and so if you go to stjohnsmiami.org, you will find our beautiful new website that has lots of new ways to be connected. And we're still building it. There will be lots of updates to come, but it is up there. So please take a look at that. Um, and on the website or in your weekly email, there is a place that I would love for every single one of you, even if you're a board member, even if you've been here for years, to please go in and update your contact information. Um, it's, it should be on the website. If not, I will make sure Harold puts it there. Um, there's a link in your weekly email. There should be a button there. It says update contact information. It'll take you to a form. Um, we are trying to get a system into place where we can have the most up-to-date contact information for all church members. Um, so when things happen, we can just be in touch with people. Um, and as updates of our ministry are happening, we can keep everybody in the loop about what's going on. So if you would please take advantage of that, um, that would help us out a lot. And last but not least, there is a Connect card in your bulletin. I invite each one of you to fill that out. Um, put any prayer request um, that you might have. Um, I will be going through these each and every week to make sure that we are in prayer with and for you as a church community. Without further ado, let us stand and join in our call to worship as we begin this service. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Our joy is in the Lord. Shout for joy, for the Lord is near. Our praises ascend to God most high. Let our praise reflect the glory of God. Rejoice, rejoice, Christ is near to us. Let us come and worship the Lord. Our joy is in the Lord. Hallelujah, praise be to God. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as we join in affirming who we are as a family here at St. John's. St. John's on the Lake is a reconciling congregation that affirms the sacred worth of all people. All are welcome to fully participate in the life of our church and ministries, each of us as we grow with God and in our faith. Whatever your race, ethnicity, economic situation, gender or sexual orientation, background or God-given abilities, you are welcome here. God calls us to acts of love, grace, and advocacy, together here and out in the world. We hope to be a sanctuary and a place without barriers for all of God's creation. Amen. Let us join in our opening hymn, People Look East. be seated. At this time, I invite forward Bonnie and Joe and Shirley, who are going to read our Advent reading this morning. 
As you all know, during Advent every week, we um, take a time to light a candle that represents a particular aspect of what Christ brings into the world. And so this morning, we are so glad to have Bonnie and Joe and Shirley read with us. All right. Good morning. We are going to be um, discussing joy for the week. It's a reunion. Every time we go home, every time we embrace those we love, no matter how long it has been, it feels like sunrise, like the clouds are parting and the rain has ended. It is joy, nothing less than pure joy, to grab hold of those who are home for us, who make home for us. Whether we wake up to them every day or travel many miles to see them again, it is joy to go home. The prophet Zephaniah tells us to rejoice at the thought of going home. The prophet tells us to imagine being set free, being unburdened, being released to live, to fully live in the grace and wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us like no one else. And then to live like that was our truth even now, even here, it is a joy to go home. John the Baptist reminds us, however, that it takes choices to live in this joy. It doesn't just happen. We choose to make life a joy by how we love others, by how we serve and give and care for others, by how we do the job we do and how we impact the world around us. We build joy as we build a home in this world and the next. We light these candles, the candle of hope and of peace and of joy as a sign that we are on our way home and we walk with a skip in our step because we can see the destination and it is pure joy. It is time to go home. Thank you so much. This morning we come to a time of prayer. And as you all are aware, each and every week, um, our prayer time might look different some weeks like it did when we faced the aftermath of the Surfside collapse. Um, and this morning in the wake of our tragic loss of Ray Rosario, um, I would like us to center this prayer time in honor and memory of him and for all the hardships um, that each one of us faces. I know every one of us has concerns beyond um, this particular loss, um, but this morning I invite us into a time to reflect on what Ray Rosario has given to us here at St. John's, what he's given to each of us. And for those of you who did not know Ray, um, I invite you to just pray for those who loved Ray. Uh, particularly Ray's partner, Rodney, um, who um, is having a very, very difficult time. And for Ray's brother, Ron, and for his family. And this morning, I'm going to invite us into a moment of silence before we go into the rest of our prayer time. And I for I'm sorry, Jenny, I have not prepped you for this, but we're going to have a moment of silence. And then the choir will sing... And in that time that the choir sings and then Jenny will continue to play, there are some cards over here, strips of paper and some pens. And if you feel led, do not feel like you have to, but I feel like something that works for me is to put into words um, things that are positive about someone that we're grieving. And so if you have words or prayers that you would like to offer, come and write them on these strips of paper on the side and place that in the gold bin um, there. We can do this in honor and memory of Ray this morning. And as you will see, um, the roses here on the altar are also in honor of Ray this morning. Let us join in a moment of silence as we honor our beloved member Ray.
this moment sign and space. Take my friends around. Here among us make the place where your love is found. Would you all pray with me? Great and mighty God, we come to you this morning with heavy hearts. We grieve the loss of our beloved friend, Ray Rosario. We pray for all those who are close to Ray who would consider him like family. We pray for Rodney. We pray for Ron, Ron's wife and their children. For Pastor Dawn and her family, who welcomed Ray in like family. We pray for each one of us who knew Ray and loved Ray and walked beside him. Lord, in this time, words fail us. Our pain runs deep and our uncertainty is high. But we know that you are here with us. And I ask that your spirit might dwell in our midst. As we carry the burdens of life, Lord, we know there are many here among us 
who have loved ones who are going through treatments of many kinds. We have friends here who are dealing with the loss of other beloved people. Maybe some of us have been given a diagnosis or going through a hardship financially, emotionally, physically. And this morning we come and bring ourselves to you. We ask that you would hold us in your arms of comfort and grace, that you would give us new strength for the days to come. Lord, give us strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Lord, give us the strength so that we might hold one another. And when we can't hold ourselves, might we lean on those around us. Might your love and grace be found in our midst, wherever we are. Lord, hold us in this time of grief and in this time of joy. For, Lord, we know that joy comes from being with you. And we proclaim your presence here today. And might your presence go with us wherever we find ourselves. Might we offer that to those out in the world as we seek to be your hands and feet in this world. Let us pray how Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And good morning to all of you. The scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. John said to the crowd that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? He replied to them, Whoever has two coats must share with one another who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even taxpayers came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. 
He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he shall burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Carol Ann. Let us pray. God, we ask that you come and speak to us. Be near to us as we receive your word. Speak through the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts that we might receive your strength today. Amen. What then should we do? What then should we do? This is the question that the crowds came to John the Baptist and asked. Once John the Baptist had received a word of the Lord in the wilderness about Christ coming, he went from town to town spreading the good news. But, as is common to all of us as humans, they were bound to have questions. And their question is, what then should we do? They were unsure of what it meant for Christ to come. And they were unsure of what they were supposed to do in order to prepare for Christ's coming. And so John responded with something that I think many of us might not have expected. But his answer was quite simple. John said to share any excess good with those who have none, whether it's clothes or food, share it with those who need it. Don't take any more for yourself than is necessary. But give what is extra to the good of others. Be mindful of other people. This will prepare you for the coming of the Lord. Today, I think many of us might have a similar question in our hearts. What do we do? What do we do when we don't yet see God? What do we do when we don't necessarily feel God? What do we do when our hearts hurt? What do we do when the world seems dark? What do we do when we're afraid? What do we do when it seems like there is chaos all around? I think John's response is quite relevant to us. Take care of one another. Be present with those who hurt. Share with those who have need. We're in a season of Advent, which is a season of preparation, but also anticipation. And I don't know about all of you, but preparation for me can be really difficult sometimes. Preparation can be hard work, right? Also, anticipation can be painful, right? Anticipating can be dreadful at times. 
I think about the feeling when you're in the car on a road trip going somewhere, and all of a sudden you've drank too many fluids and you have to go to the restroom. Right? You all know where I'm going. And you see you had just passed an exit, and the next sign you see is rest exit 30 miles or more. Right? Usually more, I'm being generous, but still, even that 30 miles is a lot. And then that feeling of needing to go to the bathroom just gets heavier, right? It gets heavier and heavier each mile you go, every minute that passes. And it might, depending on how far you're going, I've had it to where that feeling becomes painful the closer you get to the goal, right? It becomes painful. Anticipation can be painful even when we know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. I feel like this is the type of waiting that we're in. We know that a light is coming in our near future. But each day that passes, it gets a bit harder to bear. The waiting is painful, and it's only getting heavier. We're all carrying so much as it is, and it seems that it keeps piling We know that Christ is coming. We know that a light is on the way. But sometimes it can feel like an eternity from us. So we ask ourselves, how can we make it? What do we do right now? I think John the Baptist says it best when he says to think about your neighbor. Do everything in your ability to support one another. The truth is our world is really heavy right now. There are a lot of hurt and needs here in this room within our hearts. But there are even greater needs out in the world. There are greater pains beyond this place. Just this weekend, tornadoes swept through Tennessee and Kentucky, ripping the lives of dozens of people. We're still living in a global pandemic. How do we care for each person who has need? A common phrase that many of us probably hear often, and maybe we use it often, is thoughts and prayers. Well, I believe this is a very well-intended statement, and sometimes it's the best that we can do. I sometimes feel like thoughts and prayers fall short of what God actually asks us to do. I think there's often a bit more required of us. Because if we truly care for the needs around us, it means that we are actively engaged to meet those needs. If I say I care about those experiencing homelessness, and yet all I do is offer my thoughts and prayers, what good have I done? When have I gone to provide a meal 
to provide clothing or even provide shelter. The true needs of that person. Caring requires bearing a load. It entails our energy. It entails our resources and our time. It requires sharing. Sharing what we have to meet the needs. You've probably all also heard of the phrase, sharing is caring, right? While it sounds great, the reality is, from my experience, we as humans are not great at sharing. Me and my siblings refused to share most of the time. So to say sharing is caring seems a bit off because I feel like we so infrequently see people sharing what is actually needed. If we do not and cannot share, then we simply do not care. When we say that we long for Christ to come, we long for the light to come into the darkness, it requires us first to prepare and make way for that light to come. It requires us to do the work. In the midst of hardship and pain, we are asked and invited to prepare the way for light to come. We are to make a home for God to come and dwell in our midst. We are called to meet the needs around us so that light might rise up. So when we see a neighbor who hurts or going through a difficult time, ask yourself, how can I share? How can I share of my time and my presence? How can I share of my resources to meet their needs? What good does it say? What good is it if I say I care for someone but do not share with them? The season of Advent is about making a way in the wilderness like John the Baptist did. In the wilderness, making a way for Christ to come. It's about bearing the fear Bearing the uncertainty and bearing the pain of the wilderness in order to make, a, make room for God to come and dwell. Even when we're going through a hard time, the best thing we can do is to lean on one another. Recognize that each of us has something to offer. Every one of us has love to share. It might be as simple as a hug or a laugh. Or it could be as profound as providing material gifts, meals, clothing, and or shelter. This is a season of sharing. We are called to do that work to meet the needs around us. When we share with each other with our presence and our resources and our time, I do believe that joy can come unexpectedly. And I think we often feel that joy is the same as happiness. 
and I'm here to tell you differently this morning. Joy might entail happiness, but joy is so much deeper. Joy is the sense of deep fulfillment, knowing that I am okay, that I have done my part, and this deep sense of trust that here, I am not alone. That is what joy is about. Joy is not the feeling of when there's no more trials or no more pain and no more tears. Joy is this deep sense of contentment and the presence of God in one another. Ray Rosario was a man who had deep joy and infused any space he was in with that joy. For those of you who know Ray, he longed for a United Methodist Church that was more inclusive. But it didn't stop Ray from relishing in the present moment with the people around him. He found a community here at St. John's that loved him and embraced him and supported him and walked beside him. And he wanted to share that joy with the world. It didn't matter how much more work there was still to be done. This place gave him a sense of joy. And he was on a mission to share it with the world even as we work for and anticipate something better and brighter. Joy is not happiness. Joy is a deep sense of peace, knowing that we have done our part and knowing that God is here with us. No matter how deep the pain or how great the fear, joy can be found right here in the anticipation, in the waiting, in the preparation. In this very moment as we share in community, God's presence is with us. Might we care for one another might we share the burdens? Might we do everything we can to support each other in this time? Lean on one another. Offer what gifts we have to meet the needs before us. And gather strength from being together to make it all possible. Whatever you are carrying this morning in your own lives, in your own situations, I pray that you find care in this church community. Let us share and offer Christ's joy to one another as we work for and anticipate the better and brighter day still to come. Amen. At this time, Lori's passing around the offering plate, and I invite you to place your Connect cards in there as well. Christmas is the time of year. 
Being with the ones we love Sharing so much joy and cheer What a wonderful feeling Watching the ones we love Having so much fun I was sitting by the fireside Taking a walk through the snow Listening to a children's choir Singing songs about Jesus The blessed way that he came to us Why can it remain what I want to hear It's truly amazing That spirit of Christmas All the kinfolk gather round are glowing full of joy since the gifts that we're giving and the love that we're living why can it remain all through the year each day the same each day that's what I want to hear. It's truly amazing that spirit of Christmas, ain't it so? It's truly amazing that spirit of Christmas, oh Christmas. Let us stand and give God thanks for these gifts as we sing our doxology. seated. Today we come to a moment of Holy Communion, knowing that when Jesus' time had come near, he had a meal with his closest friends. In a time of fear, uncertainty, and anticipated loss, Christ invited his friends to a table to lean on one another and to feast in his love. On the night in which he gave himself up, Christ took bread. He gave thanks to God. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which has been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God, and he gave it to his disciples and said, This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Let us pray. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ, which has been broken and shared for you. And this is the cup of salvation offered to each one of us. Friends, this table is open to every one of you. This is not St. John's table or my table, this table is God's. And at God's table, all are invited to feast in this divine love. Come, enjoy this feast of love together. As we stand and sing our closing hymn, Rejoice, good Christian friends, rejoice. I invite us to think about joy and where joy comes from. And I think the joy that we believe in and know comes from God, and it comes from being together. Amen. So let us stand and sing this song together, praying for God's joy to come and live in our hearts together. Christ is born today, Christ is born today. 
is born for this. We have hope in heaven's door, and ye are blessed forevermore. Christ is born for this. Christ is born for this. Good Christian friends, rejoice in heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. News, news, Jesus Christ is born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting all. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Jenny, for leading us this morning. As we leave this place today, might you seek to share all that you have to support those around you. And might we be open to receive the support from others in our own time of need. And as we share together, might joy of Christ rise among us. In the darkness, might we feel the coming light to be with us. Go today to prepare the way for God out in the world so that light might come and shine in our midst. Go in the power and the presence of God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.